running vice this is a big uh media experiment in a way i mean what was your experience with vice and I mean, i'm sure you've thought a lot about this you know you had been a decade of your life there um but you know what do you think about vice what did it give in terms of changing coverage of drugs um in the english language media and, and where did it go wrong i guess because it did finally um you know has gone a bit kaput now yeah, uh, it's a bit of a bit of a zombie at the moment, but um, yeah, it's it, it's um, you know, I I I went to work for Vice because I've always wanted to work for sort of slightly alternative media. You know, the fact that I work for big issue magazines sold by homeless people. You know, I've always sort of liked alternative media, um, and you know, coming not coming right from the usual sort of straight uh you know um way of talking and and so so for me vice was brilliant you know i could i could write the stories uh slightly sort of left field stories and also speaking to people um not in that sort of classic bbc way where you're lecturing people about drugs and wagging your finger in a way uh it, i suppose in a very sort of square way uh, really whereas vice vice you could talk to people on a level you know, you presume that a lot of your readers at Vice have taken drugs, might have some of them might have even dealt drugs. So you're talking to people in a in a in a much more kind of uh, level level way and a bit more of an honest way as well. You're not sort of in a put, you know, trying to sort of pull the wall over their, their eyes. You're not trying to be uh, overly moral. You're not scared to sort of talk about the real issues uh, of, of drugs. And also you're not scared to talk about drug dealers. You know, not all drug dealers are complete bastards you know like uh, and so i so that gave me vice gave me rain to full rain to sort of really sort of get get deep into the sort of the drug world you know and i was spending a lot of time in drug dens in crack dens speaking to drug dealers speaking to drug users obviously i was also speaking to, to drug cops as well um but it just gave me huge you know they gave me sort of huge scope to do what I wanted to. And it was it was always me sort of going, right, I've got a story, right, I've got a story. Do you see what I mean? Which is, and you know, in the journalism world, that's actually quite rare. Usually journalists, they're told what to do. You will do a story on that or, they, or they're reactive. So there's a big, you know, a politician makes an announcement about cocaine. Okay, go and do a story on cocaine. Whereas a lot of the stories I did were almost like setting the agenda because I would see a new trend or see something happening and then jump on that, write about that. And then almost like a year later, sort of everyone else would. So that's what I really enjoyed was like doing something new that hadn't really been done before. Um, and I think that's what why Vice was a popular place for people to go to read about drugs and crime because it was always first, it was not always, but usually it was first on the scene. Um, and and why not? Because a lot of our readers were interested in that and because we were called Vice, you know, so we had to be good at Vice. And uh, do you think, I mean, like, I guess Vice has different stages and you had kind of the early stage was perhaps more cutting edge, but also kind of a bit more um, kind of crazy guys going down and these kind of, you know, kind of, uh, and by towards the end, you saw, you know, I saw sort of advice as quite a range of stuff, but some of it started to get a little bit what you're saying about that kind of quite mainstream tone. A lot of it, partly because the mainstream moved uh, and started to kind of have a more um, still a kind of moralizing tone, but more progressive moralizing. Um, and I think maybe kind of vice leaned into that as well. Did you see that a bit? And it was a bit maybe less of the kind of, um people who you know the early audience of vice were kind of i know some of it was was kind of lads out getting you know drunk or getting you know going running off to jamaica or africa and these kind of bit like oh, so did you see that a bit was that an issue or, or how would you view that yeah yeah i mean vice you know definitely was it was famous for you know doing you know i i did xxx on lsd and and some of it you know i went into a monkey cage on lsd or i i i you know whatever and 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 it was you know some of it was funny um and it was you know quite quite sort of bro sort of culture and a bit like that and and i suppose like i suppose what vice needed to do is they sort of i suppose grew up with a lot of their readers in a way i think after a while you get there's only so many sort of of, of those sort of crazy drug stories 
that you can do. And I think that's, you know, when I sort of came in there was at a time, you know, to become global drugs editor, there was at a time when they wanted to sort of like give it a bit more gravitas and give it a bit more sort of, okay, this is like proper, proper journalism rather than just sort of, sort of mucking about. I'm not saying that they didn't do pro some proper journalism before, but I think I was sort of brought in to sort of give it a little bit more sort of a, uh, gravitas i suppose and and yes yeah, so you you did lose a lot of the kind of the silliness stuff but then i guess we we made a lot more sort of groundbreaking and more um i suppose more heavily journalistic stuff and that includes documentaries and sort of more long form investigations and you know we won quite a lot of uh, awards for that but, but but you're right like then i think by then a lot of the big publications like say i don't know bbc guardian um had had started and even like the new york times although some of their coverage is a bit ridiculous on drugs but um you know they had started to understand that you know they'd started to become a bit more progressive and be a bit more vice and also employ half of our staff as well so so then almost like vice became to sort of blended in with the rest in a way and then obviously you know like you know you know in the end vice sort of you know melted because there were various sort of decisions that were made that were not great great decisions it was nothing to do with the the old you know the journalist there it was is more sort of people you know in in higher up positions but yeah so it's a sort of a pity that it's sort of you know i think it's still going along but uh you know it's a pity that it's lost a lot of its um you know, there's a lot of stories out there that are not getting reported because vice isn't isn't you know is 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 reduced so much. I mean, in the end, it was an economic uh, kind of failure, I guess, that happened. Uh, I mean, uh, there's I, you know, I hear a couple of stories about this, and maybe both could be true. Um, one is that the uh, the bosses just like mismanaged it really badly, and it was a lot of people like making you know, paying themselves big bonuses, but like, just like basically, you know, there was a whole thing about they're always in, inflating and they're, you know, you know, kind of kind of crazy, pretty badly run organization. But the other thing is that the actual model itself of just uh, giving out journalism for free and vice was, was, you know, wasn't subscriber based. It was, it was, you know, giving out great stories for free. That doesn't really work. Um, you know, you kind of need um, some of the, you know, the Guardian have, well, people paying in and also a big foundation behind them. Um, you know, BBC have license fees. New York Times have subscribers. It doesn't, you know, then independent journalists like myself now getting subscribers and stuff now moving from mainstream media to, to doing independent stuff. Um, so what do you think? What's your idea of why the economics uh, kind of went wrong? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was uh, that was, you know, there was that big thing about, you know, Facebook, you know, and, and the adverts. But basically, like, you know, you know, the big social media giants, you know, taking away a lot of the advertising. Um, and so so I think just a lot of the money just fell out of fell out of the, 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 the that, that journalistic model that had been doing so well until then, you know. Um, and I think that that was one of the main reasons it just became un unfeasible. And as you say, like, you know, a lot of places, you know, you either you either charge, um, you know, you have a paywall or you or you do what the Guardian's done. And obviously that's why substacks become uh, more and more popular because you're you're cutting out the middleman. You don't have to rely on Facebook or Twitter or whatever to get your people in. You the you you and the people are, are directly connected and they're giving you money direct to your pocket, I guess. So so yeah, I it, it, you know, obviously it's you know, ton, you know, a lot of um, you know, online magazines have collapsed, haven't they? Um and a lot of you know, even a lot of the big hitting newspapers like the Daily Telegraph are sort of almost on its knees at some points. Um, so, yeah, so it, it is it's it's sort of depressing for for journalism that it's so is so damaged. And I think the same the same is with the, t the TV world as well. You know, um, there's a lot it's a lot harder to get documentaries done now. Um, so but there is always, you know, like like drug smugglers, there's always a way around it. You're into this crazy world. So why not take it to the next level and check out www.crashoutmedia.com and there you can find completely free 
all kinds of stories, reportage, analysis, uh, extra videos and more explicit content, all kinds of stuff, completely free. Uh, or if you're into it later on, you can support the work for as little as five bucks a month or the price of a cappuccino. <laughs>